What's up everybody, this is Jonah Staub and I'm making a little bit more serious video today talking about my one year selling experience on Amazon. I'm not here to try and sell you anything. I don't have a course to offer you. This is merely just something I've been wanting to make to show people what it's actually like to try and be somebody who sells for Amazon and how they treat you as a seller. I'm gonna show you a lot of things on the back end that I don't think a lot of people know about, which is how they actually treat you and things that they do that make it very hard or impossible for you to actually run your business. And so I'm gonna walk you through my one year selling timeline and basically talk about things Amazon's done to bring my business to the point where I'm no longer profitable and I don't make any money. And so I'm gonna show you a lot of screenshots and I'm gonna explain the situation. And the screenshots are there so you get a better understanding and also so that you can just see the facts and what Amazon does so you can make your, uh, your own decision based off my situation and what it's like to be an Amazon seller. So here's a product that I sell. It's a portable grilling basket that comes with a pair of silicone grilling gloves. And to kind of talk about why I chose this product, it wasn't like something I just felt like selling. I actually used the software on my computer to look at different markets on Amazon to see what products were selling well. And I wanted to look for a market that was a little bit newer, that was just kind of starting out, that had a good search volume per month, so there was a demand for the product. And I actually tracked this for five or six months before I actually started manufacturing. So you can see it's got a good search volume per month. Uh, there's the people that are selling a similar product don't have a ton of reviews, so it's a little bit newer and there's not it's not oversaturated with a ton of people selling. And so another reason if I go to Amazon, I search for a grill basket, you can see a lot of the people are selling these similar type grill baskets. Uh, they have a lot of one star reviews, negative reviews. And the thing is, is they're the same uh, negative reviews. And so they're talking about things like the basket rusting after they use them. Uh, when they're cooking holding the handle it's too hot and it burns their hands when they're going to flip the basket to cook the other side their food will fall out and also just looking at their listing uh, I feel like it's very simplistic and kind of unprofessional they use a lot of broken English in the text and these are the top sellers so I figured I could do a lot better with my listing uh, get professional photos done and what I really wanted to do, to do was actually take that negative feedback um, from the other sellers that already existed and redesign my own basket to basically eliminate those problems and so um, I really wanted to differentiate myself from the market so I actually designed this on my own with 3d CAD software and so I added three divided sections that holds your food in place so it won't fall out when you're uh, flipping it it's made of 430 grade stainless steel so it doesn't rust it's got the grill gloves so you don't burn your hands when you're cooking over a fire and like I said the reason I want to mention this um, is because I want you to keep it in mind while you watch this video is that this is a superior product I'm not just trying to sell the generic stuff that was already in this market. I'm trying to differentiate myself with something that's better that people were wanting. And so here's my reviews. You don't have to take my word for it. I've only got one one star review. And that's been in my entire lifetime of selling. So you can see here's my sales for the entire lifetime I've been on Amazon. Sold 1,581 units. And so getting one one star review, that's less than 0.1% of my sales have resulted in a one star review. And so the other thing I wanna point out is that these, uh, the reviews that I do get, they will highlight the features that I added um, to improve off of what was wrong with the other ones. And I that's just more to attest to um, being a superior product. And so like I said, I want you to be able to keep that in mind when you watch this video that I'm not just a generic seller and I want you to see what it's like when you actually do differentiate yourself, how hard it can still be um, dealing with Amazon. So I launched my product at the beginning of December 2018. This gave me a lot of good Christmas sales and being a new product on a new listing, Amazon will give you a boost on uh, in the search result ranking. So I was ranking about halfway up on the first page for most of my main keywords. And when Christmas had ended, at the, even at the end of January, once February hit, almost all my sales were coming from running pay-per-click ads. And I was no longer ranking on the first page um, organically for those search results. And so this is really the kind of the common trend that started to happen is unless it was a major holiday like Father's Day or Christmas, I was almost always relying on getting most of my sales from doing pay-per-click ads. And the interesting thing was I was always just getting enough sales to kind of break even. Some months I'd make a little bit more and so I'd get some money back and other months I would lose money. But for most of the entire year, besides major holidays or events, I was getting just about enough sales from PPC just to break even. And so... The real first problem I had from Amazon was the fraudulent returns I got from Christmas. And this on the screen, you can see some of these uh, returns are what I got. People have sent in broken products, they use them and they break them. 
I've had people send in other people's products, other sellers products. They can really send anything they want for that matter. And I, when this happened the first time, I wasn't too worried because I figured I'm going to take a picture of this right now. I'll send them to seller support as much as Amazon loves to boast for their love and support for a small business like me. I'm sure that they're going to look at these and they're going to charge the person that ruined my product and get my money back. But that's not what they do at all. They support the buyers. They don't cover any customer damage returns. And so to tell you about how the return system works, when somebody that buys a product wants to return it, they can do whatever they want to it and they just select a reason why they want to return it. They get a full refund from Amazon on your behalf as a seller. You don't get to decide in that. And then once they get their money back, they're going to send that unit back to the fulfillment center. Once it gets to the fulfillment center, they're supposed to look it over and deem it either unsellable or resellable. If it's resellable, they're supposed to put it back in your inventory so you can sell it off your listing again. But I've never had one that was resellable. They always come back as unsellable. So when it's unsellable, you have to pay a fee to either have Amazon throw it away and dispose of it for you, or you pay a, an additional shipping fee to have it sent back to your house. And so when you get a return, obviously you lose all your money that you had on that sale. You lose the money that you paid. You don't get reimbursed for the shipping fees that you pay to get it to the customer. And you're only going to get an 80% reimbursement for the referral fee, which is a fee you pay to use Amazon.com as a platform to sell. So then, even though uh, it gets sent back to the fulfillment center and it's deemed unsellable, honestly, most of the returns that I get are in perfect condition. So then I end up spending an additional fee to pay to Amazon to get that perfectly good unit sent back to my house that could have been resold while it was at the fulfillment center. So the next thing that happened after this, Amazon blocked me from answering all the questions about my product on my own listing. And this is something they'll do to people's uh, buying accounts. They will do this randomly if they think that you have manipulated the reviewing system by either leaving a one star or a five star review on someone else's product intentionally. If you upvote or downvote positive, negative reviews to manipulate the system and it's random. So I have no idea why they did it to me. I don't ever buy anything off Amazon. All I do is sell, and so there's a lot of stories of people that have just had this happen to them randomly. Amazon, uh, if you want to try and get out of it, you basically just have to beg your way out with seller support, and if they feel like letting you out, then they'll reinstate your account to answer questions and leave reviews. Otherwise, they won't. And so obviously, this is important because if somebody is a potential buyer and they want to ask a question about your product, it's important that you as a person that sells the product could give a genuine answer. So the next thing that happened is Amazon remeasured my product incorrectly. And so this was in June. I sent in 62 cartons that had 620 units total. And when they arrived, they went to the FTW1 facility in Texas. And what they do when they get your shipment is they're going to pull your product out and they're going to measure it. So you get put into a size category. When they did this measurement, um, it was actually bigger than what it actually is. The dimensions were bigger. And so it bumped me up into the next size category which instantly gave me almost a $4 higher fee. So every time I'd make a sale after this, Amazon would get four extra dollars incorrectly just because I was in this next size category. So I call seller support and I request a remeasure after I talk to the specialist team. The lady on the phone tells me that luckily for me, the FTW1 facility in Texas is the only fulfillment center in the entire country that uses a laser measuring system to precise, precisely measure products. So, I had the, re the remeasure done, they use the laser measuring system, they get the same precise measurements that I have in my drawings, and I luckily get my fee reduced. But what she also tells me is most of the time, at any other place, all they're going to do is use a tape measure to um, measure your product. And so I'm going to mention this now because a little bit later in the video I'm going to talk about how this can really hurt you as the seller. So for the last six months of the year I had my listing redone with professional photos. I redid all the keywords so that they were up to date. I became a registered brand, so I had enhanced brand content, and despite doing all this, my sales didn't improve, and I didn't see a better ranking in the search results. And so, Amazon also, at this time, really started to hit me with a lot of things that were making it hard for me just to sell. They blocked me from sending all the messages to people who buy my product, and if I send a message to somebody making sure the product's okay, and Amazon thinks that, that message violates the terms of service, they'll block me. And it's an automated thing, so sometimes even if you don't violate terms of service, you can still be blocked. They also started to remove reviews from my listing and my uh, feedback as a seller. And this is something that they don't tell people why they do it or how they do it, but we think if you get more than two to 5% of people who buy your product to leave you a review, Amazon automatically thinks you've manipulated the reviewing system and you are essentially flagged. 
And so they'll come in and start removing your reviews at their discretion. And you can't get out of this as a seller. Basically, from that point on, they're going to always be removing reviews from your listing. And it's kind of random. My numbers change all the time. Um, I used to have a lot more reviews as a seller uh, on my seller feedback before Amazon removed them. It seems like they have a tendency to remove the positive ones. If you get a negative one, there's more of a chance that it's going to stay. And so um, the reason they did this is they're trying to crack down on a lot of people that were getting fraudulent reviews in a quick time so they would beat the competition. And this is why it's super important because your reviews play a huge role in how well you rank in the search results. And so what ended up happening is a lot of honest sellers that sell quality products that took sometimes years to earn hundreds of their positive reviews from, from buyers, Amazon would come in and flag them and wipe out all the reviews and eliminate a bunch of their sales, if not all of them, and essentially um, kill them from selling in their market. And so the interesting thing at this time, which was August or September when this was happening, there was a huge flood of Asian sellers that came into a lot of hundreds of different markets on Amazon that started selling super generic products that were all the same. They were dirt cheap. They were low quality, but they would have a brand new listing with no selling history that had 50 or 100 or 200 five-star fraudulent reviews that were all within just a couple days of each other. They also figured out how to manipulate the search result rankings so they would be at the top of all the search results for that product. And so you'd think that Amazon trying to crack down on this would have deleted those listings and banned those people, but they don't do anything to them. They're still selling today, and they have basically killed off a lot of the honest sellers in a lot of different markets on Amazon. So this happened in my market. I would go on and do a search, and there would be new listings that had 50 uh, fraudulent five-star reviews. And essentially what has happened is the people who cheat their way to the top of Selling a product are the ones that are staying, and the people that are trying to do an honest job with quality products that follow the rules by Amazon are basically just being wiped out to the point where they can't sell. So the next thing Amazon did is they sent me two different payment amounts, and this one was really interesting because I go to the payment summary page, they tell me I'm getting paid a certain amount, and then I get an email confirmation saying that I'm getting several hundred dollars less. And so I go to seller support and I show them these screenshots and I ask why this is happening and they basically just say, don't worry about it, we'll look into it and we will make sure you get the amount of money you have earned. Obviously, they give me the lesser amount. I don't know why this uh, is happening because obviously this is all computer automated stuff. There shouldn't be a discrepancy um, with Amazon giving me two different payment amounts when this is done by the computers. And so that was super peculiar. The next thing that happened is they blocked me out of my account for two weeks simply because the expiration date on my credit card expired. And I simply tried to input uh, the new information with the new expiration date, and they wouldn't accept it. And so for I dealt with seller support for two weeks, telling them all I need to do is update this expiration date on the card. And it took them two weeks before they actually let me back into my account. So now I'm going to talk about the sequence of events that have really killed my business. And essentially what's happening is Amazon is finding or making ways to take the most money from me possible while they give me minimal sales opportunities or I can't sell at all. And so... I'm going to be as clear as I can and explain this so you hopefully get a good understanding. And I'm going to show you some screenshots and I want you to pay attention to the dates of them and how close they are together compared to when I do something, followed by the action Amazon takes, how coincidental everything is and what they're really trying to do. I'll let you decide that for yourself. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is an IPI score. This is your inventory performance index. And what this is is a score Amazon gives you as a seller. And basically the way it works is the faster you can sell products that you bring into Amazon, the higher your score is going to be. So when I finish my fourth production of 870 units, I'm sending them into Amazon to the FTW1 facility in Texas again. And when you make a shipping plan on Amazon, once your products are in transit, you click this button that says Mark as Shipped. You input your tracking information, and this is basically just letting Amazon know that these actually are coming to the fulfillment center. So when it says that I created this on November 1st, that's when I actually clicked that button. Coincidentally, three days later, November 4th, Amazon sends me an email that says not only are they going to now require an IPI score of 400 to qualify for unlimited storage, but my IPI score is now all of a sudden 358 points. And this was crazy because this is almost 50 points lower than I'd ever seen it. And this isn't something that just slowly went down. It's just all of a sudden it's 358 points. And I'm not going to qualify for the unlimited storage that's going to take place on January 1st of 2020. The way that's going to work, I'm now going to get a certain amount of cubic feet. And for every one cubic foot that I am over that limit, it is a $10 fee. So they send me another email that says, with all the excess inventory that is on the way, they're going to charge me over $1,500 in fees due to that excess storage space that I'm going to take up. 
And this is something that three days before this wouldn't have mattered because I would have already had unlimited storage and they wouldn't have been able to charge me a fee. And I got very lucky because December 3rd is the last day of the year that Amazon will check in your products for the year. And so if these would have arrived to Amazon on December 4th, I wouldn't have had any chance at all to avoid this $1,500 fee and they would have just charged, charged me for it. So my products, luckily, I was very fortunate. They arrive on December 3rd. Amazon checks them in and I get the chance to do a removal order. I do a removal order after calculating how many units I need to remove to avoid this fee on December 28th. So I go the whole month of December and despite selling three times more products than I did in November when they lowered my IPI score, you'd think that after selling, increasing your sales three times, I'd have a much better IPI score, but it doesn't barely go up at all. It goes up from 358 to 365 was the highest I ever saw it. So I'd still make a removal order on December 28th for 555 units. The way a removal order works is after you start it, there's a 30 day window that opens up and Amazon then has 30 days to package all your products and send them to you and they're also going to bill you in this time. So on January 9th, Amazon decides to randomly remeasure my product once again and they do the measurement and once again, it is incorrect. They add, uh, they put it into a bigger size category so once again, I get a higher, almost a $4 higher fee. Every time I sell a unit, Amazon gets nearly $4 more than they should. And oddly enough, coincidentally, this is when a lot of the units from my removal order start showing up to my house. On January 27th, one day before their 30-day window is, is done, there's three semis that show up at my house. They dump off all the rest of the products that haven't showed up yet. And not only that, but this is when I get billed. And I look at the bill, and when I created the removal order on December 28th, I was in the, I had still been in the same correct size category. This would have made, or this would have meant that I get charged 50 cents per unit to have it sent from Amazon back to my house. So 50 cents times 555. Once they did the random remeasure on January 9th, they waited until then to start shipping all these products from the removal order. So now all these products that get sent to my house are subject to a 60 cent fee instead of 50. So they waited until they did this random remeasure and now they can charge me 60 cents times 555 rather than 50 because I'm in the next higher size category. And so I obviously have to pay this incorrect 10 cent higher fee. And after this, um, I'm still stuck selling with this incorrect fee on my listing and I call seller support. I request a remeasure. And all my units at this time are at the FTW1 facility in Texas, where they have the laser measuring system, as I've mentioned before. So they remeasure it and it comes back incorrect. And so I keep calling them and I figure this is going to work because they've done it correctly before here. After six times calling seller support, they do not uh, remeasure it correctly one time. And after the sixth one, they tell me they're not going to accept my request to do any more remeasures because they've done it enough times and... They say that uh, they're not going to do it anymore. And so they're going to, I now have a permanent listing that has an almost $4 higher fee incorrectly. And Amazon's going to just be able to take that money because they say so. And after that, they decided to also de-index my entire listing. from. And what this means is they're going to basically remove your visibility from the search results. So nobody can find your product. The reason they did this to me is because I had uh, my main photo, I used text. And you can't do that because it's against the terms of service. They don't enforce it though. There's thousands of sellers that do this. I did it all year long and I never got punished for it until now. And when they de-index you, they don't tell you. So you have to figure it out on your own as a seller. I went almost 48 hours being de-indexed and this is a huge hit for when this happens to you. After I got reinstated, if and sometimes they don't reinstate you, I had nearly zero sales for two weeks because you've spent such a history building uh, your ranking in the search results to get de-indexed with no traffic and no sales for 48 hours that is a huge hit and in some cases you could essentially be starting over if you're in a super comp competitive market and then to top that off once I get reinstated I notice that Amazon is now selling my product on my listing as an Amazon renewed product with almost a seven dollar discount so they're basically now competing against me as a seller with my own refurbished product and to in the thing about it is they are using the same photo that got me in trouble and got me de-indexed to advertise that product to people for nearly $7 cheaper. So that is really what's brought me to the end of my one year selling experience. Amazon is getting more money than they deserve and I'm not getting the money that I've worked hard for and earned. And after being de-indexed and having all those things happen, 
Um, I'm not being profitable just because of the pay-per-click ads that I'm running. I'm barely making enough sales to keep on top of that. Actually, every month I'm just a little bit below, so I lose a little bit of money every month just trying to sell the rest of my products off. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please share your feedback on it. Let me know if you want to know anything else about Amazon and what selling is like. I have a lot more content that I could go in-depth with um, and make new videos about it. And so let me know what you liked about this video and what else you want to know.